guys welcome this is my first tutorial on data stage admin so uh, my perspective is to enable every person out there who is in IT and want to learn data stage administration without going to any institute and paying almost 60 to 70 thousand rupees it is not worth enough so let me tell you guys it is a very easy technology or a tool to learn so first of all i am starting with data stage admin tutorials soon i'll also make uh, another tutorial which will be on data stage itself data stage design and development the only requirement here is, uh, you know, I'll be uploading it on YouTube so that uh, a lot of guys can get uh, benefit out of it. You only need to do is, you just need to subscribe my channel so that whenever I am uh, uploading a new video, you can get a notification for the same. So today I'm going to explain you the very first process if you are a data set administrator. This will be the most executed process from your side. So it is code deployment to Unix Linux environment. So there are two type of uh, deployment which comes in for data stage administrator. One is to deploy any Unix script or a configuration file or a data file on a Unix on Linux server. So guys, you must be aware that data stage follows client server architecture. So your client get installed on some Windows machine and your server can be either Windows or it can be Unix and Linux server. Mostly that in every project you will see the Unix or Linux server, reason being is it is very fast in comparison of Windows. So only two tasks which will be the main, Unix code deployment and data stage code deployment. As part of this video, I'm going to cover how to do code deployment in Unix and Linux environment. So guys, there are two type of data stage administration IDs which are mostly used. One is UVADM, this is one, UVADM, and there is another one, DSADM. So this UVADM ID is used to do the Unix and Linux code deployment, and your data stage ID, DSADM, is used to do data stage code deployment and data stage designers. So there are, there are prerequisite as per, you know, this is my plan that how I'll take this video forward is I'll tell you the prerequisite, what is the requirement, you know, prerequisite you need to do before the code deployment, what is the process of code deployment, how to do it practically, and the last one is what is the next video coming for you. So prerequisite is you must have the ID and password for UVADM ID. You must have a source or you can say version controlling tool version control tool where your latest version of that script or configuration file will be present. So guys, in every project you will find a source or version controlling tool. What is the use of this tool? Let us take an example. You uh, have a script today, Unix script. Tomorrow there are some changes coming in. So you will do some changes into it. But you want, you do not want to lose the earlier copy as well. So what this tool do is you can check in the earlier copy and on top of it you can check in the latest copy so any time when you want to extract any specific copy like the first copy which is unchanged you can extract that and see that what was there secondly if you want to get the latest version you can get the latest copy and it will give you the copy which is after changes so it is very beneficial in the old projects where you have multiple environments so you will get the latest version. So it will be coming into your desktop, which will be used to deploy the code. Last but not the least is file transfer tool. This is a tool which will be the main thing to transfer the code between your Windows environment to Unix environment. So when you will be extracting the code from this source or version controlling tool, that script or configuration file will come to your desktop or your location on Windows. So now what is the process of code movement? So we need to extract the code from version control tool, which is this tool. And we will get the latest version on our location on Windows. Secondly, log into file transfer tool from UVADM ID and go to directory where you want to move the code. Now, 
setting a permission of file move to Unix and Linux environment. This is the most important step a data C admin should perform. Otherwise, all the efforts which has been done so far will be lost. So what is the permission? So whenever you move a file from Windows to Unix location, there will be some default permission assigned to it. Like there are three type of permission, read, write, execute. Read is given as a number four, write is given as a number of two, and execute is given as a number of one. So total they constitute as four plus two plus one, that is seven. If you want your script or configuration file to be executable, you should give is execute permission as well. So guys, I'll show you that how to do it and how to give permissions. And congratulations guys, you know, your task to move the code to Unix and Linux environment is completed. So this is the whole process. Now let's move on to practical, how to do it practical. So I have a tool here, WinSCP. This WinSCP tool is an open source tool. You can download it from Google or from anywhere which will be used. This site will be your Windows location where you will be putting your file which you want to move to this Unix location. This is my Unix and Linux location. So let us take an example from this directory, this Windows directory. I want to move the code to this ETL dev test that is your Unix directory. So for an example to show you, let me create a script here. Let us take an example abc.sh, okay? And let me write down my first for deployment tutorial and save it. I have saved it now. You can see if I want to open it and see my first code deployment tutorial. Now, whatever the file or script you want to move, you will keep at this location. This is your Windows location. And you will select the directory. You can change it here. You can give the directory path you want to give. And then you can just click on the mouse first button and drag and drop to this side. So guys, you can see that from Windows, it has moved to Unix. For validation, let me show you. I have also logged into Unix. Let me go to this directory. So guys, you can see that by UEDM ID, it has been moved to this location, ETL dev test and the file name is abc.sh. Just for curiosity, I'll show you that it is having the same value which I have put in. My first code deployment tutorial, correct? Now, here comes the next task. You will see abc.sh is there, but there is a permission assigned to it. So you will leave it first one. These three will be the permission for this ID, UVDM. Between there are three more, which is for this DS owner group. This is a group. That means UEADM will be able to read this script and write, write means changes. He can do the changes into the script, but he will not be able to execute as, as execute permission is not given. Any user who is in, added into DS owner group, he will only be able to read the script. He will not be able to change. He will not be able to execute. Last three are any user which is not in DS owner group, but is an another group, he will not be able to read the script, not even write, not even execute. So as a data set administrator, always you will find a permission 755. So this is a command ch mode, changing the mode of the file. 755 is the generic permission which we give to any script. ch mode 755 and then a script name. Enter. Again, let's find out. So you can see that permission has been changed from this to this. That means UVADM user will be able to read, write, execute all operation onto it, read and execute. That means any user in DS owner will be able to read the script and execute the script, but he will not be able to do the changes. Same way, who is outside from this DS owner group can read the script and execute the script, but he will not be able to change it. Now guys, you know, 
you need to come to Unix and change this uh, permission, there is another way to do it. This WinSCP tool offers you the same uh, leverage. If you will click on right click on this script, there is an option properties. Here also you can change the permission. As you can see, let me refresh it. You can see the same permission 755 is now assigned to it. You can come, come here, click on properties. Either you can change directly here, 754 let's say, or you can directly change here, which will give the octal value. So 754, okay. I'll again come back and see that what is the permission. You can see that this execute permission is now gone. So guys, you can also do it from your Unix box or your WinSCP tool, that is a transfer tool. So guys, uh, I think this clear the process that how to do the code deployment in Unix and Linux environment. This is my humble request to, you know, subscribe my channel because if you want to get most benefit, uh, you know, you want to get most out of it, you need to subscribe so that you can get the notification whenever there is a new tutorial I'm uploading to the YouTube channel. Also, I'll request you to send it to your friends, the link, you can copy the link from my channel and give it to your friends so that they can also get uh, leverage out of it and uh, get a good career in IT. So guys, there is no need to spend too much money in institutes. I'm going to bring you whole tutorial about data share admin work. End to end, there will be nothing left. So guys, stay tuned and subscribe. Thank you.